What's up, everybody? We're doing a catch and cook today on something that probably not too many people eat anymore. I remember when I was a kid, I ate them a lot. But uh, we get one caught, we'll fill you guys in. Already getting a bite. We just got here and threw a line out and already getting bit. And I know, I know that's what it is. We'll just see what happens. Eli is hooked up. We got it here clanking, Coco. Several different ways. What kind of furs you got? Really? On there. Yep, he's on there. That's a little green sunfish. No, that's a little bullhead. Well, that is the target species, but he ain't big enough. We'll get him tossed off and see if we can catch another. One. These are yellow bullheads. When I was a kid, all of our ponds around we had several stock ponds this one included just full of bullheads and back then people it wasn't too uncommon for people to eat them they just didn't care uh, we actually came over here oh i guess it's about a year ago and caught a, several good ones there's some big ones in this pond actually caught several good ones and put them in a cage and put them in the creek I was gonna leave them in the creek clear creek water for a while kind of purge them out and then a flood happened washed our cage and everything away we never did follow up on it i think that was a stick no i'm wonderful back now But anyway, they, if I remember right when I was a kid, the taste was all right, but they just, there was a, a muddiness to it. They taste like, they tend to taste like the body of water you catch them out of. And this stock pond here hasn't had cattle on it in over a year. This is where I brought the catfish the other night and turned them loose that we'd caught at the spillway. And the water was actually clear then. But there's been an algae bloom since. I guess the water's water's warmed up a little bit. There's something, probably a turtle moving around right there. Or a turtle or a big old flathead. Funny story. I used to work at the fish lab at Arkansas Tech University's University in a we had a shocking boat. And we brought that shocking boat up here one time and was gonna clear out a bunch of the bullheads in this pond. We knew there was some bigger catfish in here, but we didn't didn't know how big. And there's a there's a I'm getting a bite right now. There used to be an old boat dock right right out here. And we pulled up that beside that boat dock and got on the pedal. And a 67 pound flathead come rolling up. And I was I was on the operating the pedal and a buddy of mine reached in the water to grab him and it shocked him and when, the, when it shocked him I got off the, the pedal again and he said get back on it and got back on it and fish came back up and he grabbed it again 
he started getting shocked again and i told him all right i'm off of it he said no stay on it and he he withstood that electricity where we get that fish and we ended up getting it in got him in weighed him on on a certified scale 67 pounds he's a big one my uncle or my cousin had put him in here years and years before that they just sat there and ate bluegill and bullheads I'm getting fast bites, but I think it's little guys. Now this is going to be embarrassing if we can't catch a bullhead. Technically we're not skunk. You did catch one. Oh, that's true. You can't do a catch and cook though without something to, to cook. I'm ready to strangle my father. Because he left a big old knot in his line. <laughs> just reels it up in it. I remember he used to get on to me that. For that, as a kid. I really, really thought we'd be cleaning fish by now. No. I ain't got the fish, really. So. Ginger found a little bull hit us up on the bank. She's vicious. That's Ginger, and that's Bailey. Ginger's my weenie dog, and Bailey's my miniature. And I walked off and left that one, and it is getting hit. I don't know how big he is. Probably not very big, but it is getting hit. He's probably on there. He's on. A little bit more weight. He may be he may be big enough. That'll do, pig, that'll do. He's not huge by any means, but he'll eat. He's a fish. These things got little vices for jaws, too. Once they bite down there, are all business. Usually the better ones, that's where they're at. I'll set him up on the bank for right now. Catch one or two more. We gotta get all this done and get back to the house by six o'clock. Leave, go to Russellville. Our crack camp, our last camp of the year, starts tomorrow. The girls' camp, and that's the camp's the reason I even started doing these videos to begin with. Way of financing the camps, I'm trying to get my channel monetized to make a little side money to for the camps. Teen Reach Adventure Camps. It's a camp designed for at-risk teenagers in the foster system. Uh, 12 to 16 years old. And right now, we're the only camp in... Uh, there's several, several in the, in the United States. But we're the only one in Arkansas right now. We're trying to get some more started around in the state. But that's my goal with this channel is to, to get to a position where I can just do this and keep the camps going. That would be wonderful, could. Very doable. A lot of people say it's a pipe dream, but I don't really don't care what other people think or say. It'll happen. I think I'm getting another bite on this one here closest to me. As hot as it is, them bullheads are down there low in the water, the colder water. And they don't tend to move a whole lot. They smell your bait, they go get it and just sit there. 
get another pretty good bite on this one. I figure he's probably on there. Yeah, I got a turtle. <laughs> Really? Oh, had a fish and there was a turtle on the, a hold of the fish. That was kind of weird. Another small guy. There's a turtle come back up there. He's wanting his fish back. I hope y'all can see him out there. Right there. Right there. Oh. Getting a bite on this other one. There are some good channel cats in here. Of course, that'd be defeating the purpose of what we're doing. Got him. Oh, little guys. I mean, technically, you could fillet that one. I'd rather not. I mean, if it was. Mangrove snapper, if it tastes like mangrove snapper, it'd be a little bit different. Honestly, you you fry fish and batter, most of them taste a lot, and you make when it don't taste real good. Tastes real good. Comes a texture thing after that. My other one's I already got one on this other one here now. Get this cast back out. Get this one. Nothing else for fun to catch. Another dink. I'm making something besides a dink. You got them corralled there, Ginger. Mm. Getting one over there. Yeah. Dustin's got one over there. Is he gonna be big enough to knock sides off of him? Maybe channel. Is it channel? Yeah. Huh. Here's another one. Missed that one. You usually don't miss too many bullheads. They usually commit. Well, little guys is all we're catching right now, but that could change us any second. There's some, there's some two pound bullheads in here. There's some pretty decent uh, channel cat in here too. Used to be a lot in here. When I was a little kid, my grandpa drained this pond. And when he drained it, there were several 10 pound bass got out of it there's still pictures floating around somewhere i don't know if my some of my cousins might have some of them but anyway restocked it back with catfish and we all fished out of it for years and years and caught a lot of fish out of it and i had a friend of the family my uncle had told him he could he wanted to come up here and catch a mess of fish so we told him he could and he did he caught 20 30 fish and didn't think nothing else about it. Then one night he was out on the back porch and he seen a fire appear at the pond. He didn't know who it was. Nobody had asked him about fishing or anything. He thought it might have been one of us. So he just drove up here. When he got up here, it was a guy that had, had asked earlier about fishing. I'm getting another bite on this one. And he asked him what he's doing. He said, well, he's catching fish. 
he said well you know that that welcome was for that one time you know i didn't didn't know he was going back up here he's all oh, if i'd known that we wouldn't have come back up here so we've been coming up here the last two weeks catching 20 or 30 every time they come up here and they caught the far out of them and depleted the fish big time in the pond and there's so many bullheads that the the channel cat never really have covered from we knock sides off that one can't we that's two. We need really need one more. If we can get one more, we'll we'll cook them up. Got some weight to it here. I made a hurdle again. That's coming in like a fish. Yeah. Another keeper. Not a not a big one by any means. Ow. Oh, and they got some fins. You gotta be careful with their fins. That's three. Let's catch one more keeper, and then we'll cook them up. It's hard to say that very enthusiastically, to be honest. Because <laughs> if I remember right when I was a kid, I'd eat anything, and I remember them tasting bad when I was a kid. I ain't gonna knock, knock them, because I ain't never tried them. The only thing I've ever used before... <laughs> Miss one? Yeah. Yeah, I got my hook clean on that one. So you know it's getting a bite. We we'll rebate that. As before, I like threading my worms on. I'll do it in all kinds of different ways. And I thread it, thread it on, and just bring the, the bar right past the end, and let the bar let the hold the worm on the end. I completely hide the hook when I'm fishing with worms. Makes sense to me. I mean, a lot of people catch fish every day without doing that but that's that's just the way I do it there's another bite already it's fast I'll tell you that Hitting them on top of the head. Think about stinking bullhead. They pull like crazy for a couple seconds and then they they quit. And then you're left to wonder if they're on there or not. Yeah, he's on there. That may be another. Nah. No, he's a little guy. Ginger's enjoying them. What a ginger dog. These are a good fish for kids to catch because it's so fast. Normally we throw them up on the bank, just leave them laying. Well, not normally. That's what we always do with them, regardless of size. Besides that one time I was telling you about earlier. But I'm all about eating the fish if it's edible though. So I ain't, I ain't scared. This is zombie apocalypse happens and we ain't eat bullheads for a long time, be alright. One more, that's all we need. I'm getting a bite on this one already.
It feels like it's got weight. But then, not so much. Give me my worm back. Maybe. Yeah. This one is a strong negative, Captain. This one will this one will work, I guess. I mean he's not he's not large by any means. I really really thought we'd catch a, a bunch of them bigger ones. What oh, is there in the prime spot of the pond, I, I guarantee you. It was quick. I missed that one. That bite was fast. Huh? So that bite was fast. I'm gonna attempt to set this pole down and grab the other one and reel it in. Let's see if that works. Got kind of frenzied right there in that one spot. Really, really surprised me on that. Yeah, that's fine. Gotta love braid. We're just gonna throw that just like that, and I'm gonna deal with that knot later. I might deal with that knot, I mean, I wanna cut it out later. Looks like the other one's getting a bite again. Yep. Yeah, he's another small one. 453. We'll fish for another seven minutes before we clean them. Yeah, I may be getting another bite on this one. Hard to tell. These little guys, sometimes they don't do much at all. Yeah, he's on there. I've lost track of how many that it makes. <laughs> Me too. We're in a teen somewhere, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't taking long, I know that. There's a bunch of these little dudes. Yeah. They're getting smaller though, is a problem. Gonna be some good flathead bait for somebody. Anybody that wants to come catch a mess up for flathead bait, just holler. You're more than welcome. There's several catfish species in Arkansas. These are considered rough fish. They're not a they're a non-game species. So they're non-regulated, which means there's no limit or size limit on them. 
unlike the flatheads or channelers or blue or the Mississippi whites. But there's another species of catfish in Arkansas that a lot of people don't know about, and that's the mad toms. There's a a whole set of small creek, clear creek catfish called mad toms. They're just little small, slender, little tiny, tiny fish. Live, live under rocks and streams. And smaller. Yeah. yeah, I got another one on this one already again. When you first start reeling them in, you think, hey, here we go. You first start reeling them in, you, you think they're really, really good. All right, that's my cue to start cleaning some of these guys. All right, we got our olive oil heating up there, and we're about to knock the sides off these fish right quick. They are not very big. Not at all. That's all right. That is typically what you see with a bullhead is that yellow colored meat. Get the rest of it off. Well, they are not very big. messing with these things. I've been poked several times. You see right there. The fins are very, very unforgiving. If they, if they touch you, it's going to stick you. Kind of thing. And that just brings back memories of being a kid and messing with these and getting poked all the time. Oh, when I was a kid, we'd come to the pond bank with nothing but a, a string and a homemade hooks that my grandpa had made usually string off a old feed sack come to the pond with a box of matches and a piece of sheet iron galvanized sheet iron catch a bunch of whatever is biting bluegill green sunfish didn't matter whatever it was clean it and, or leave it whole Skillet, what we did back then. Put it on top of that sheet iron, old galvanized sheet iron on top of a fire we built on the pond bank. It never did kill me. 
can't say it didn't do anything to me. A lot of people in this world probably argue that it did. All right. All right, I've got a combination here. I'm gonna turn the oil back up a little bit. Get it up to temp. A little piece of skin in there and see if it's... Nope, not yet. In this bag, got a combination of flour, white cornmeal, because that's all they had, uh, Cavenders, and Tony's. I'm just gonna throw the legs in there. Take them around a minute. Still waiting on the oil to get hot. Not too terribly concerned about fish stuff on my hands. It just that don't bother me too much. Well, some of you are probably cringing right now, but that's all right. That. Oh, she rode that. Is it a keeper? It could still be a fairly small stick and be bigger than our catfish, you know that. If you guys ain't got one of these, I recommend getting one. It's a it's a cooler backpack. I bought it so when we go down to the Gulf, we can take it out on the jetties and stuff with us. When we're fishing for smaller fish, and just put them in there. It's a whole lot easier than having to deal with a basket or something. She's rolling enough now and put the rest of it in there. Sometimes if you got a fatty fish, it does a little bit better to cook it a little bit slower anyway. Kind of renders some of the fat out. To cook it slow doesn't doesn't sear everything inside it. Another thing, in my opinion, people cook their fish way too long. Most people do. That stems back from the 
eon ago when meat preservation was a problem. If it was any kind of meat at all, everybody was just kind of programmed to, to cook the far out of it. A lot of times because it's rancid kept preservation wasn't all that easy to do back then so people would just take the meat and they would store it in you know shavings with ice block or hang it dry or whatever but when they cooked it they had to cook it well done to kill bacteria and stuff that's growing in it even getting sick even my grandparents would cook meat to death when i was a little kid a, a rare steak wasn't nobody ate steak rare You know, this doesn't look good at all, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> it might be, but it, it doesn't look very good. We're going to try it regardless. And that is enough to get cooked through. Drain as much of that oil off as possible. Although that might be the saving factor with this, I don't know. Alright. I'm a ketchup guy. I have a feeling this is going to need ketchup. I'll try a piece without just to get the true flavor. But my memory is not that bad. And I am almost certain that this is going to need, need ketchup. No, on, honestly, that's that's not bad. There's not even a, a slight hint of. Doesn't need some salt. Not even a slight hint of mud like I thought there would be. Now, this pond was cleared till just a couple days ago and had a big algae bloom. This done, Dustin. That is very surprising. It is it is a little different. I'm not gonna lie, it's it don't it, it don't rank in the high up in the my preference of fish by any means. But if I was camping or just out here casually and that's all there was to eat, I would, I would have no problem with it at all. Those are all small, so there's a possibility that the bigger ones might have a little bit different taste. But I'll just be straight up honest with you, this, this is not that bad. Looks like fish. I can taste that it's catfish. Mm -hmm. The texture is a little bit, it's a little bit softer. But I think that's because I cooked it slow and that olive oil. That's softer than spoonbill. It's been overcooked. It's good. 
it's it's I, it's hard to say that it's all right <laughs> but it, it is it's all right yeah it, it don't beat bluegill or nothing like no that. no by any stretch it's not i mean it, out of the freshwater species that we eat all the time it's probably on the bottom yeah but i wouldn't have a problem eating a mess of it i mean sitting around a campfire at night no but if, if i'm catfishing i'm hoping i don't catch you know right those if i have one big enough to eat a bluegill i'll eat it my, it. my biggest concern when i when i was a kid i remember tasting like the pond of course this this pond hadn't had cattle on it in a long long time so that that probably has helped yeah. i mean it don't it don't taste like nasty water no it don't it don't not muddy taste none at all well there you have it tastes better than the fish you catch on lake right now i don't understand that lake I, that's just weird to me. One out of ten, I'd give it a five, I think. We're not so I am. <laughs> I think if we was to deep fry it in a in a cooker that's We'd have to try that. Jeez. That mush solid two. One <laughs> solid edible. Two. <laughs> One one is like eating a skunk and you can't get rid of the smell. <laughs> That's just it's a texture thing. That's something taste else. Is good textures. Yeah, the textures is, is, a, is my biggest problem. It feels like I'm eating baby food that sat in a car for a month. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd eat it again. I mean, I, I would too. I'm not afraid of it. But but he's right. It's it's a little off. And these are small enough that I didn't worry about cutting the fat liner out or anything. Yeah, you don't, you don't taste that at all. It, my thing is, it's, it's just a texture thing. Mushy. All right, guys. I still got a pole. I forgot about that. <laughs> Do I have the biggest one on here? <laughs> Probably so. Well, that's going to conclude the video. Appreciate you guys watching. I know it's kind of weird but hey now you don't have to do it and I do want to do it again the deep prime changes the texture up because that's that's the only problem I have with it is is texturally we need to get right. the drum to go with it it's been outside our lane you guys have a good and we'll see you on the next one hit that like and subscribe <laughs>